What's up everyone, it's Prometheus, and today we're going to check out the Origami Dripper. The Origami came into mainstream popularity when, and I'm probably going to butcher this name, Jia Ningdu of China won the World Brewers Cup using it. Plus, its striking aesthetics and range of colors really pushed it to full Instagram influencer status relatively quickly. The 20 carefully crafted ceramic ridges serve an important purpose in the coffee brewing process. They create airflow channels between the filter and the dripper. This allows the barista more control over extraction speed and brew time. Now this is where I'm going to put a big fat asterisk and say we're going to touch a bit more on brew time a little bit later. But the one major benefit the Origami has over other drippers is its ability to use the most common filters on the market that you can find on pretty much every retail shelf in any cafe around the world, and that is the V60 cone filter and the Kalita Wave flat bottom filter. But that's not to say those filters are interchangeable. The V60s are a smooth cone shape and the Kalita comes with 20 waves that prevent the filter from sticking to the dripper and slowing the drawdown. In my experience, V60s tend to lean more into higher clarity cups with more pronounced acidity and slightly faster brew times. On the other hand, the Kalitas tend to extract denser, milder coffees with a little bit longer brew times. When it comes to brewing an origami using a V60 filter, more specifically the light roast filters from Kafek, I found a very similar brew and outcome in comparison to using a standard V60 dripper. My biggest concern with using the origami using V60 filters was the potential for just a super quick brew. But I noticed that even at my standard V60 grind, recipe, and including the Kubomi Bloom, I ran just 10 to 15 seconds faster on the origami. And the cup was exactly how I like it. Clear, bright, and layers of complexity. The body and mouthfeel suffers a little bit when using a V60 filter, but my preferences with coffee lean more towards clarity than it does body. And the extraction percentage on that cup of coffee, even with a little bit shorter brew time, landed well within the ideal range at about 21%, so I had no complaints with the V60 on the origami. When it comes to using the Kalita filters on the origami, I had pretty high expectations and pretty high hopes. A lot of my friends and fellow coffee professionals ranted and raved about how great it is using the flat bottom filter on the origami. Plus, the World Brewers Cup champion used flat bottoms on their presentation as well. So there is definitely something to it and it definitely can create a good cup. But when it actually came down to me personally using the flat bottom Kalita filters on the origami, I ran into quite a few roadblocks. I do often experience a bit slower extractions and brew times on the Kalita Wave dripper, just in general, and I kind of have that expectation with it, but when it comes to using the origami with the Kalita Wave filter, things got even more extended. Now in general, I do take brew times with a grain of salt. There is no specific brew time I can tell you that's gonna work for every dripper, every coffee, or every palette. It's just very different, and it's based on a lot of different preferences, temperatures, and all sorts of variables that basically we're not even talking about today. But I found even with the extended brew times using the Kalita filters on the origami, the coffees were very watery and lacked the body and density that the original Kalita wave often delivers. And when it came to testing the TDS, I wasn't shocked by low percentages based on what I tasted in the cup, but more or less confused as to why this was the case after such a long contact time. But I feel like that's more or less a case of reaching that point of diminishing returns, which is kind of a video all in itself, and I don't even really understand how to test or measure that, so we're not even going to go into it. So after quite a few brews, and not being fully satisfied with the cups of coffee I was getting from the Kalita Wave filter inside the origami, I decided to look for more recipes and techniques and see if I was missing something. Even after multiple brews, different grind sizes, regrinding the coffee, long blooms, a different coffee, and not allowing the dripper to fully draw down completely, I found myself still pretty dissatisfied with the results using the Kalita filter on the origami. Now, I think at this point I should drop in just a little bit of a disclaimer here and say, even though these filters didn't work for me, it's obvious that they do work for some people. But I do think it's a little bit telling that on the origami website, it states that their drippers, and I quote, accommodate the cone-shaped paper filter. And that's not to say you can't use the Kalita Wave, but I think that they've realized that maybe the experience varies so much considering, you know, my experience and then maybe some of my friends and fellow coffee professionals experience really loving the Kalita filters in there. So in the end, it's kind of just up to you to figure out which one you want to use. But through my trials and tribulations with the Kalita filter in the origami, I had a few thoughts as to why it may be that slow. But my concern here is the folds in the filter completely negating the purpose of those gutters. 
Instead of allowing the air to flow freely, which keeps the brew flowing smoothly, the weight of the water and the coffee begin to collapse those folds and restrict that airflow, which in turn slows it down to a crawl. As the gutters reach the bottom of the origami, the ridges are very small, and I could definitely see this being an issue, especially with larger doses and recipes that have high gram pours. On the other hand, the traditional Kalita Wave filter utilizes smooth edges to avoid that same issue which is basically the inverse of using a V60 filter on the origami, which again avoids the same issue. Plus, possibly having a larger portion of the filter sticking out from the bottom of the dripper could potentially keep things from backing up. Of course, these were just theories that kind of popped into my head while I was struggling with this filter and this brewer to get it to work, to understand why people loved it so much, and I just couldn't get there. Even grinding super, super coarse, getting it to flow at a rate which is pretty standard for a Kalita, about four and a half minutes, I still just found the cup lacking in density and body. It just didn't have those characters that I look for from a flat bottom Kalita brew, and even the extraction percentage was pretty low, like just over 17%. So. That's just where I landed using the Kalita filters on the origami. Of course, there is no denying the pure aesthetic beauty of the origami dripper, and that's what originally drew my interest like a coffee moth to a flame. And as someone who has learned how to really appreciate the craft of ceramics, the build quality feels great with a smooth finish and nice crisp corners. Yet the main selling point of it being able to utilize both V60 and Kalita filters is debatable and doesn't really seem to be recommended by the actual manufacturer. The way the origami brews and tastes using a V60 filter is essentially the exact same as using a V60 dripper. And when it comes to the use of Kalita filters, it just couldn't pull out the body and density I wanted and expect from a flat bottom filter. So if you're on the fence of whether you want to get an origami or a V60, I would just say pick out the one that looks best to you because they essentially will taste the same and run the same using the exact same filter. If you're weighing the Kalita Wave against the origami, my recommendation would be to get the Kalita Wave because I find the brews much more consistent in terms of taste and extraction. And lastly, if you're trying to maximize your coffee experience while also minimizing the amount of coffee gear you have on hand, get the origami. Both filter types do fit and function, so it's possible your experience will be different. But having said all that, I think it's time to wrap this one up, and now I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on the origami, and what are your thoughts on the origami versus the Kalita versus the V60 versus to whatever else is out there? There's drippers coming out at a pretty constant rate right now, so let me know your thoughts on all things pour over and the origami. Drop them in the comments down below, and as always, I'll see y'all next week. And a big thank you to my November Patreons, Ads, James B, Jacob P, David W, Christopher, John K, Squeegee, Roe, Brian, Lisa, Obo, Andre, Rick Racer, Sean Noel, Spookus, Bount Coffee, Mika, Samantha, Claire, Steven, James K, Josh, Andrew Horrison, Bobby, Corey C, Curry, Jeff Roth, Joey N, Ninja Warrior Coffee, Testing123, Jason C, Jerry, RD, Tim, Matt, Tony, Zachary V, Tyler F, UK Espresso, Robert Underdunk, Jeffrey R, Oliver L, Thomas B, Daniel P, Mike B, James S, Brian M, Brandon B, Tyler M, and Sebastian. And of course, a big thank you to the barista and barback tiers. If you want any information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now. And of course, a big thank you to you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Follow my Instagram at Prometheus for content throughout the week. My blog at Prometheus.com. My coffee at LittleGiant.coffee. And as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.